stifled, worn out, or just bored with your nine to five or nine to nine job, I want you to know that you're not alone. I was there too, till I started asking and wondering if there was another way to live and work where I could actually be more of me. In this episode, I bring to you real conversations with real people who have chosen to step out of their nine to five employment and create a life for themselves that is more in line with their inner rhythm. Good afternoon, Karthik. Good afternoon, Ramya. Thank you for agreeing to come and share your story as part of this series. I believe that your story is going to be very rich, a lot of learnings, a lot of perspectives and insights for all of us listening. So uh, with your permission, we're going to rewind a bit and go back into the time when you were actually working full time in, in, a, in the corporate world and your different roles, how much time did you spend and what you were doing. So if you can tell us a little about those days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for uh, considering me for this uh, interview. Uh, going back in a, in a nutshell, I think I would say I started my career in 96 as a software engineer in Infosys. Uh, that was the time when IT had started uh, uh, its boom phase, I would say. The early uh, days of IT boom was there. A lot of us got uh, from engineering got into IT, uh, Infosys, Cognizant, uh, Wipro, TCS, HCL, and these were the majors who were recruiting in large numbers. So joined uh, Infosys, uh, then um, as a part of their projects, went abroad, worked in uh, Boston for a while, and then came back uh, and uh, started working in the Bangalore office. Uh, Infosys had spun, a co spun off a company called Yantra, which was into supply chain and logistics. I was a part of that. So Yantra had uh, set up their offshore uh, division and uh, continued there. And then Yantra expanded uh, in India. And then about 2005 or so, Yantra was acquired by a company called Sterling Commerce. So we, I continued with Sterling Commerce and uh, continued till about 2010. Um, and uh, 2010, I wanted to return back to hometown Chennai. Um, and uh, until then I was in Bangalore. So I moved to Chennai and uh, I wanted to experience uh, services industry. Back then I, I was uh, into software products. I wanted to see how services was. So, and my uh, core area was uh, testing. And therefore uh, in Chennai, Cognizant was the big one in testing. So. It just uh, happened that I happened to join Cognizant and worked in Cognizant for about uh, seven years and then uh, started off on my own. Lovely. So, um, so Karthik, you must have been in quite a senior position by that time before you decided to start out on your own. And it isn't a choice that everyone makes. So how did it happen for you? Was it something that was brewing up like a bubble over the years or was it one fine day you just decided you're going to step out. So what triggered your, uh, it's a big choice. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, uh, I totally get it. Um, uh, I would say it was brewing up for a while. And uh, the, the thing is, uh, over a period of time, uh, those 20 years, at least 15 plus years, one starts questioning uh, oneself, right? Well, in in the initial days, there is a lot what of the days in which you were questioning yourself. Ah, no, I, I'll just give little background. So, in the initial days of the career, just like everybody else, you are into uh, learning new things, um, of course. And then the rat race of uh, when I get promoted, uh, what's my salary raise, etc. Those are the motivators, the external motivators, and. Uh, Beyond the point of time, I don't know when it reaches the 10th year or 15th year mark or whatever it is, at, at some stage, you uh, just start becoming supervisor, supervisor of supervisors, manager, senior manager, director, etc., which is all nice, uh, nice titles for the ego. Ego gets boosted for sure. Uh, but then uh, the value you are bringing, right? Uh, the, the I mean, I'm talking purely for myself. Uh, the personal learnings that you're bringing, the, the contribution you are making, starts decreasing and there is a huge dependency on uh, um, on others which in itself is not a bad thing but the learning definitely stops the, the feeling of emptiness starts coming in because it's more uh, dependent on outside mm -hmm. and uh, that's when 
the fear also starts creeping in because when you know you are uh, when you are continuously learning when you are enjoying you are contributing there is no room for insecurity but when you are heavily dependent uh, on a system uh, where uh, where you are not uh, doing any of these there is insecurity starts creeping in i have been having that uh, wow. ever I since i joined going, i'm going to ask you to go deeper into that that is something very profound you just laid out here kartik which is um, and i know you said you speak for yourself but i think you speak for a lot of us i think you speak for a lot of people on a similar journey where you talked about the ego and you talked about you know certain needs and aspects of the ego that are being you know satisfied by the titles and the promotions and then you talked about an emptiness and that emptiness is now not an emptiness of the ego but an emptiness of something else which right, right. is fine as you so you know the you that's not the ego is feeling the emptiness and you mentioned learning and enjoyment as you know the lack of learning and enjoyment actually that connect to that feeling of emptiness so i'm just trying to recap yeah and then fear as you know the fear coming in as a catalyst or as a product and uh, yeah i just wanted to get that again so so tell us more about these fears so what are the kinds of fears that creep in in that emptiness then well actually uh, you see uh, it's like uh, uh, see when you know what you're doing right as in like okay let me go back to the uh, starting years Uh, of the career right you are a fresh graduate you are uh, joining the job every uh, you are mostly working in the technical domain or uh, the, whichever technology everything is new every day you go uh, you learn something new because this, this is your first job uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of learning uh, work, new uh, learning to do new things uh, learning to work for the client uh, so th that sense of contribution is a lot more okay uh your focus is more on learning problem solving for the client uh how can i serve the client is the primary uh, uh, importance at that time you are insulated from the other uh, uh, pressures like revenue target that uh, at a senior level you are uh, uh, having to take up and you know you know kartik when i hear this i'm actually i feel so happy for you actually that because you know even though you're saying you i know you're speaking about your journey and it's so amazing to hear that in your early years as you laid out what was important to you was the sense of contribution and serving the client because um, i'm a researcher in this space so believe me that is not everyone's top of the mind and that is not always the main priority but it's really interesting that this was your priority even in your early years and then over the years somehow you know the opportunity or ability or the the space to be that contribution and to learn got stripped away as you went through the roles right which you so beautifully described a supervisor of a supervisor and you know and you are just sort of holding the accountability in place rather than being the contribution and learning and growing so uh so so i can sense these needs for learning and growing that you know started almost see them visually like emerging as sprouts inside of you and uh, but from from the growing of those sprouts to actually deciding i'm going to put aside all of this and i'm giving it in quote success the titles mm -hmm. and start something on my own how did mm -hmm. you get the courage to do that i would say uh, honestly it's instead of courage i would say uh, okay for, before i uh, go to this i'll just answer one part a lot of what uh, we are is uh, it's coming time and again and again uh, it's very very clear is uh, got to do with the environment we are surrounded with uh, when you mentioned how did i get the customer service orientation learning orientation i would credit it to the first team i joined wow we were such a bunch of uh, amazing people uh, and uh, it was a lot of hard work but everybody derived joy in that hard work i i was like a reflection of I'm going the to environment i like that i'm yeah. just to underline this you know derive joy from the hard work 
Yeah, yeah. Because there is, there's, you know, so many myths around outside, right? There are myths that hard work and joy cannot go together. And, but please go on. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was not, I mean, it is not that the, some days weren't frustrating. I, 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 I'll be very honest. I mean, there were days we were complaining and all that, but in general, overall, the biggest learnings happened in the first two years. And as you grow up the ladder and ladder, then you'll try to think, what can I manage? What can I uh, delegate and all that, which is a part of uh, organization growth. I'm not denying that. But still, one has to retain the, the core of uh, the contribution part. Okay, you contribute at a different level. You just don't supervise. Uh, so coming back to your other question, uh, honestly, it was not courage. I would say uh, circumstances. Okay. Uh, between 2013 and 2017, as I said, this feeling was nagging, uh, the feeling was uh, building up over a period of time. And uh, in between 2013 and 2017, I was in a, a role called operations. Supposedly, one of the most powerful, very important roles from a company's perspective, it is still, uh, there's no denying that. Because finally, companies uh, in this today's uh, world are measured by the uh, I mean, we haven't found out alternate ways, just like HR hasn't found out an alternate way of uh, uh, the bell curves. Uh, we haven't figured out a way of 90-day uh, quarter-on-quarter results. That is what determines the contribution of a company, right? We are unfortunate, uh, but that's the reality. And therefore, this team had to help company achieve that. And... Uh, that was not easy in the sense like fundamentally uh, it, it had to coordinate with uh, the delivery teams, uh, the uh, what do you call that? various different functions within an organization. And what unfortunately was happening uh, in the overall software space, I'm not saying my company, uh, the company where I worked, was uh, software grew astronomically over the last 10 years. While that is good, it was uh, very bad in the sense that uh, when you grow, right, when you grow your muscles, like when you try to run a marathon, right, every, like you, you have to grow slowly. You have to, uh, what do you call that, build all the body parts. So similarly, I'm, uh, the analogy to the organization building us, is everybody comfortable with the growth? Is everybody uh, uh, ready for that growth? That is that so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Is not uh, just not possible. 20%, 30% growth uh, of all IT companies. And at some stage, they rupture. I mean, they have that hit. Each, day, each company I know has gone through uh, that rupture at some stage. Uh, and it is natural. It has nothing to do with the company. They, the companies are being run by phenomenal people. It's just phenomenal it's the people. pace of growth of the industry. It is just that nobody can sustain that pace of growth, that madness, the overall madness. And uh, this company where I was working was hitting that stage. And everybody knows it, but yet you keep running with it, right? Because to, the, it's today's target, next month's target. Uh, what will the, they have to report to the stock market? Right? Now, internally, a lot of painful decisions had to be taken by the company, which is not, uh, which was not comfortable for most of us. And uh, there were some who were a little more comfortable, uh, some who weren't. Definitely, it was not, uh, my inclinations were not towards that. Um, and, uh, and also over a period of time, you realize you start reflecting and finding out what is it that really gives you joy. I mean, of course you've taken up different roles at various stages. You've learned also. So was this something that you actually started reflecting on then? Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. Even in this role, what I realized was how do you communicate this? Uh, and I'll share a blog offline with you. How do you make people, one, one thing I clearly realized was I could understand what the top management was trying to do. And that was in the best interest of the company. I was very clear. We were all very clear. But the message that was reaching the middle and the uh, junior management was something completely different. There was a sense of scare. Will I lose my job? <coughs> Sorry. So, um, and why are they doing, why are they changing the policies like this? Uh, now, somebody had to do the bridging job. Like a company that was uh, where people were, uh, not a company, I would say the industry where people were used to a lot of luxuries, 
because the overall uh, pace was going good, suddenly started feeling the heat when companies started putting uh, lesser friendly policies, more budget restrictions. People were wondering why, why, why? What is wrong? What is wrong? And, and were nobody you was there. one of the people asked to be that bridge, or were you, did you take it upon you yourself? I took it upon myself. My job was to drive the mandates. That was my official job. Get this done. I mean, I, I was a part of a team where I had to drive. I could have chosen to drive this the formal way by sending mails, which I had to do, but that was not working clearly. And I'll share a blog link with you offline so that you can uh, see uh, an example of uh, what we tried doing. So uh, I tried uh, making it empathetic in the angle of the uh, employee, trying to communicate what the top management was truly meaning and how it was doing it and in the how, best interest of the company. And how was that process inside of you? Because, you know, what you've described actually, it happened back then, it happened more recently now during COVID times as well. I happened to also be a coach and I've seen this happening with quite a few senior leaders and I wish it wasn't so common, but it's quite common feeling, you know, this being torn between what we're supposed to do and what, you know, you may not believe in or where your values are pointing to you. So tell us about what you felt inside of you and then how did you navigate those feelings? So what was happening inside of you at this time? Okay. Now, the moment I took on this extra responsibility to bridge the communication gap, I felt strongly that if we are able to bridge the gap, if we are able to be empathetic towards the employees and communicate in a language they understand, we'll be more successful in the initiative rather than uh, sending mandates, cut the costs. Okay, there was a clear bridge scene. And I took upon, I told my boss that I'll do these informal initiatives, right? My formal job was to uh, do spreadsheets yeah. or manage spreadsheets. But uh, the informal job, which was much more key component, was uh, about driving a message change, getting into a discussion, getting into uh, a dialogue with the affected, the seemingly affected parties. Uh, that was an initiative that I took on my own. And uh, we thought, number one, we should uh, not act like cops, right? Cops as in the bad cops. We should be uh, empathetic listeners and the process should be fun filled. So we gamified the whole thing. That was one more instance where we brought so in games. And yeah, I'm going to stop, stop you here because uh, I know that what you're doing today has a lot with gamification of yeah. learning mm -hmm. and other things. And, and I want to see, you know, where the seeds of that actually started getting sown. Okay, in your okay. own thinking and experience. So was it really at this stage or was there a time before this as well? Okay, there was, uh, that happened actually two, three years prior to that, before the operations role. That was again a very, uh, uh, I wouldn't say serendipity or what do we call it, right? I mean, that was the time when I had taken over an account. Uh, when I joined Cognizant, it was an account where I had to manage about 400 people at offshore. Uh, that was a time when uh, the industry had come out of the uh, financial crisis, the Lehman Brothers, 2007 to 2009 was the period. 2010, the market had opened up and suddenly there was huge attrition. And this was an account, uh, Fortune 500 account that was uh, running for about eight years and the customers were uh, little, little getting a lot getting worried, uh, mad about uh, why are we losing people, what will happen to the knowledge uh, uh, how, how do you intend retaining knowledge and transition? So we put a knowledge management framework and we, we assured them that we will replace and all that standard things. But they weren't convinced. They said, you guys are getting freshers and uh, trying to manage. Uh, how can you prove that they are capable? We struggled. I mean, what I'm going to tell you is a long struggle, but because it will take a long time, I'll just say it's a one and a half year soul searching and struggle, okay? But after that, I happened to, uh, I mean, I, in, a, in a nutshell, I kept searching. I, I kept going from place to place to find out answers to this. Okay. Yes, we are doing the hard job of uh, transitioning. That was definitely a part of our day-to-day -day job. But how do we communicate to the clients? How do we convince them that these people are capable? Right? Uh, you can put any number of PowerPoints. 
but conviction has to happen. So in 2012, CIA had organized a, a, a summit, knowledge management summit, and I was uh, nominated for that. I mean, just to uh, explore. It was a two-day summit in Bangalore, and uh, in all the miscellaneous events that happened uh, of various different forms, there was one session and one word that I carried back with, and that was about Web 2.0 and gamification. It was done, if I remember right, by a person by name Krish Ashok of uh, TCS. So what was it in gamification that most drew you in at that point? At that time, I had no clues, uh, Ramya. I had no clue of what gamification was, what games was. The game, I don't even know whether I understood it as gamification. I, today, I can tell a more technical term uh, definition of what games and gamification are. The word game and learning is all I took back. Coming together. Coming together. And now, these, are these two concepts, because, you know, game and learning, mm. and I know you're doing a lot to, you know, bring them together and you're doing a fantastic job, but I don't see them put together a lot in the mm, world mm. that we live in, right? Not even in schools. Where it yeah, yeah, it's a sad thing. It's a very sad distance. thing. It's a very, very so, sad thing. So I'm thinking, so apart, so was this the first time that these two concepts came together in your reality? Or how was it for you when you were a kid growing up in school? Were you someone who used to gamify your learnings or, you know? No, 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 no nothing of that sort. I was just like a normal so kid. This I mean, was the yeah. seed. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's now uh, fast forward back to then how you started implementing this. Yeah. See, during... in fact, uh, we are growing up in a culture. We, we all grew up in a culture where play is seen as opposite of work. Yeah. Or studies, or studies, right? Almost they can't go almost opposite. Funny. Either you play, you can't keep playing, come back home and study, or uh, uh, don't keep fooling around, goofing around uh, work, or you slog for three, four months and then uh, do a party. And uh, the, the only yeah, play or fun really you are allowed is that those 10% uh, or not even 10%, I would say, whatever. At the end of the project period, you are allowed a party or one day outing. That is the play and then come back, you slog it out. That is what is cultured, uh, considered as the accepted thing, right, at work. Work and play cannot go together is the notion that we still oh, live in. Message. Yeah, no. message. Now, games, I just carried back that one term. I was just thinking... I had no idea. I mean, I don't remember anything else in that speech, but the game word, I thought, okay, maybe this is the answer. Why don't we come back and ask our uh, uh, young team members to gamify? And I'll tell you one more dot that connected. One super impressive thing I noticed in the associates uh, when I joined Cognizant was they used to celebrate uh, uh, they used to do bay decorations, right? It's a large uh, team, 400 member team uh, for Pongal or Christmas or uh, any of these functions, right? The base used to be decorated uh, Onam or whatever it is, right? I mean, that there was a sense of during those uh, festivities, they used to do something called bay decoration. Okay. I thought, why don't we put create some games? I was working in an insurance uh, client. I was working for an insurance client and uh, connect games to a bay decoration of games relevant to the insurance domain. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. This These dots connected because that uh, desperate mind was seeking answers and, and for one and a half years. These, the, these youngsters, the associates, how did this land on them? Okay. So that, I mean, I just ran it through with my immediate uh, managers and they were open, but none of us had any idea how it will pan out. And we also did not, uh, I mean, we thought if three, four games emerge, well and good. That's, I mean, we, because our expectations were very limited or maybe five, 10. And we had no, uh, what do you say? We didn't have any, uh, we didn't know what to expect, honestly. Accepting, give this challenge. Yeah. That's all. And sometimes that's the best way to go into a new space, right? Right, 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 right. That, that, that's exactly what happened. Well, what so we gave it to one of the module leads had given it to their uh, teams. Something nice started emerging. Then we rolled it out to the others. And then they started competing with each other. And over the next two weeks, in a, in a healthy sense, in a healthy sense, in two weeks, two, two to three weeks time, the entire hall, every single bay had games. Commercial insurance, uh, life insurance, 
uh, what do you the PNC? Uh, I mean, uh, for so, your consumer so insurance. Time. If I were to put this together, you know, through these gains, you saw coming together the things that you valued, which was, you know, things you mentioned like learning, enjoying, contribution, all coming together in the form yes. of this game. Yes, activity, yes, right? yes, so, yes, absolutely. And it was a huge learning for all of us because number one, we, as I said, it was just a, a challenge. It is not a mandatory thing. Uh, the second thing was we didn't know what to expect. It was just an experiment. But what came out just blew us away because, and, and then when we reflected and brainstormed, uh, it was evident that finally everybody comes to work and does some, uh, uh, for the sake uh, sake of it. I mean, it's not, some people do enjoy. I'm not saying that, but there is always monotony in work. There is yeah, I, I think I think it's the more than eighty percent or more than ninety percent of people go to work just for the sake of it. Exactly. Sake of it. Yeah. Here was an avenue. And they put in extra hours, mind you. They, they put in extra hours, stayed back, enjoyed, and did this. And not for a promotion. Not, not for from a course, promotion. Not, yes. not for anything, but just yes. for the game, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because it honored the creative side of every one of them. <clears throat> and you know what? The other beautiful thing was, they all truly collaborated. Usually there will be team meetings, conflicts, etc. Right? Now they are all creating something together. Because there is an unknown, because there is creativity, uh, and uh, you are having truly collaborative, creative meetings to come up with something undefined. Absolutely. You know, Skartik, as you're saying this, I'm just, you know, I spend a lot of time actually just standing and looking at my son and his friends play. It's like I'm like this little spy who's, you know, and of course, when he was younger, I would play with him. And if you look at kids play, this is what they do. They're so creative. They're collaborative. They're coming up with creating things in the face of unknown. The more unknown it is, the more it turns them on. And it's amazing that now you could see this whole, the same thing playing out with the adults, right? Right, right, right. And right. recognizing that, oh, this doesn't have to be just that joy of childhood on the playground, but you can bring it into the workplace. So tell me how you leverage this now in this, in the latter situation, in your latter job, where you had to be this communications, where yeah, you, where you yeah. took on the role. How yeah. do you bring games there? Um, what did you pull from this into that? Once this knowledge theme park, we, we, we called it the knowledge theme park, uh, the insurance knowledge theme park. And it was huge. The knowledge theme park. Yes. Right. Yes. Did I get that right? Like a Disney yeah, world. You got theme it right. Park. Yeah. Okay. Knowledge theme park. We actually, uh, uh, because every question you prompt, uh, you, uh, what do you call that? Uh, every word you say makes me expand on that experience because that was the most joyous experience. Pardon me, I'll just take half a more minute. Please go ahead. It was like the theme parks that you see, uh, right? You, we actually gave tickets for the clients mm. to see different uh, parts of the insurance uh, bay. Okay. Wow. It was way back in 2012. Uh, we didn't have the, in hindsight, we should have recorded or video recorded or something like that, but it was wonderful. It was, it was bliss. The clients went back saying that this is the best ever thing they have ever seen anywhere now let me close with their main problem you guys are not uh, having knowledgeable people okay they went back saying that for somebody to design a game in the subject matter needed higher level skills than doing their regular day-to-day -day job so we are much more than convinced of your talented associates now please train our teams is what the clients literally said. That was the, uh, we were like in cloud nine. We never expected this. All we wanted to do was just satisfy the clients and do the best possible. What we ended up doing was transforming their uh, somewhat skeptical negative view into a completely positive view. This team is really, uh, and full credit to the associates creativity because finally, and they came up with games, uh, Unimaginable. It was not all 100% games, but huge engagement related things. Um, I will try and see if I have some snaps of it and share with you offline. But uh, it was amazing. Okay, coming back to your other question. Um, and we went uh, and the icing on the cake was 
we ended up winning the innovation award for the year uh in cognizant at the cognizant level back then cognizant was a 80000 member organization okay this was unbelievable and we invited literally hundreds of visitors we thought that this although it was created for the sake of client visit usually things go off after the client visit we kept it open for 2 3 months because we we felt inside that we have created something like a masterpiece i mean i'm not uh, it, it was truly joyous moment yeah. for us i can i can see that actually when you're describing it so let me uh, you know just put this in a sort of uh, different way which is here is your role that you're playing the job that you are paid to do that you know your designation all of that and then here's this little project that you start on the side not mm-hmm. something you're supposed to do not something you're paid to do just something right. that you spontaneously come up with right, and right right it's it's a huge success a but more than that i'm really interested in what that did inside of you kartik to your own self of you know to your connection and how you started getting the faith and belief that there's something that you can do with gamification and how that carried you and make you allowed you to even take the big bigger leap and plunge yes so take us through that yes yes this in fact in the first two years this is the moment uh, that i cherished that gave me a feeling uh, it was not just for uh, it it was something meaningful it was not some plain entertainment games all games were connected to the business all games had an impact on the client relationship which was what a part of my main job my my main job was to manage employee happiness and client relationships mm-hmm. employees were happy creating the games so you're finding the passion in gamification and using that to fulfill yeah. your job responsibilities in your main job right exactly now after that uh, what happened was i transitioned to another team which was the operations team and then there again the routine struggles pressures which i was describing here again i tried playing the same concept to see whether it would work can i do a replica of that but then the situation was different back then it was a 400 member team i had the access to young talent here it was a 20 member team but the target audience was not the clients it was the internal managers it was an internal team right convincing them to uh, cut costs and all that we had to do it in a different way altogether this again we started off the project it took almost a year uh to make progress only because everybody gets lost in their daily jobs right i mean there there was a client visit that was right. a trigger here yeah. it's like uh, you so started what, you you face so many obstacles mm-hmm. so what did you come up with at the end of that one year so like it it jo, just so happened that we came up with uh, another variant of it something very similar we called it the learning carnival okay very similar Mm-hmm. uh but the concepts we were trying to portray was different because that was insurance domain this was um, revenue finance pnl uh, workforce management related concepts and the way we had to do it again was different because um we had a lot of remote teams but whoever was there in chennai we called them for a, a, a showcasing of what we had done the rest we had to do it through video conference and all that so it had to be done in a in a different way but end up, end intention was can we communicate what we intend uh, intended in a meaningful way through games that was the core uh, commonality this again was super successful uh the very senior managers vice presidents were hugely appreciative it and in fact it went up to the it didn't go up to ceo level but maybe one or two levels lesser uh, than that it got a mention in the annual uh, uh they call it uh, annual offsight of the senior uh, people right i don't know what that I, i forget the name but whatever it is but more importantly forget that that was just more a uh, external the real thing is people started connecting with us the ground level managers started connecting with us hey here is a team which is trying to communicate i'm not saying it is a yeah. 100% transformation i i'm not trying to say that if, if, in these kind of change management initiatives if the support is 40% and you are able to may push the lever to 50% in terms of cooperation that is a win for me i'm not saying i i moved the lever from 40 to 100 yeah, you move it yeah so, i so move it to the extent i yeah. move it That's so you it. have these two beautiful experiences behind yeah. you yeah 
the knowledge theme park and the learning carnival. Yeah. Lovely experiments. Now tell me how with these, when did you decide that you're going to move out and okay. yeah, go on sure. your own journey? No, even at this stage, I was not clear. Not okay, I, I, not, not even clear. I would say not even uh, moving out you was not even a, a, this thing. Come yeah, to you. Yeah. yeah. I moved to a related role, similar miseries continued, <laughs> day job, similar miseries of a different type. I like the way you say that, similar miseries of a different type. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to so, frame yeah, them. Yeah. So you keep going through them, 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 them. And, uh, and then uh, it came to a point where it was just unmanageable. It was, Honestly, it was taking a toll on my mental health and uh, physical health too. See, you just can't, uh, it's like, you, uh, you cannot play this avatar. You cannot fake your avatar. What you are not, you can't do it. Like that, you know, and I can't ignore the reference to a game there with an avatar. But yes, avatar. you can't fake your avatar. Yes. <laughs> so, so at some stage I said, okay, I'm not in, I'm, I'm not going to be in this team. Not that this, because this team is not important. It is just that my inner nature doesn't align with it. This, yeah. team, uh, this team, job and functions are extremely important for the organization. It's just that my personality is not fitting with it. Yeah. There are, of course, a lot it's more capable awareness. people. Yeah. Then uh, there was a, uh, a good friend, uh, friend, a senior person whom I had approached uh, in academy. See, because learning and development has always been my passion. Uh, I've, I was never in the formal learning and development team. I thought, let me try a stint in that. But even there, it should not be operations learning, operationally running learning, uh, which is what most people got to do. Uh, again, they have their own targets, initiatives, etc. But it should be the joyous learning, right? Uh, so one uh, senior person, uh, he said, I will give you a role for three months. Okay. I know... This is within the organization. Within the organization, in academy. You, uh, Beyond that, I will not be able to give you unless some customer funds it because uh, we are going through as an organization, uh, we can't uh, do creative roles now. As in like, we, we don't have the luxury. Uh, so I said, that's a very fair deal. I mean, the fact that you're giving it for three months and if some, if in the three months we are able to do something for a client and, and, and are able to build opportunities, it will be a win-win uh, also. So he, he gave me full freedom and I uh, uh, he said, you develop a gamification framework. I did that. And uh, there was one client who showed interest. Uh, we thought that it will pick up and uh, uh, go into a, an engagement, but it didn't. And uh, I had to be true to this uh, person because I don't want, uh, obviously, he, he was very transparent and he was generous in giving this uh, three month role to me. And I know at that time it was a very, very difficult time for the company overall. And uh, I was wondering what to do next because it was just one month away. My role was ending in one month and I didn't want to play any other role in this company. When I say in this company, it was not about the company in this industry. Industry, even. yeah. In this industry. Yeah. Well, what I meant was the, nothing to do with the company in this industry. Yeah, the nature of that job. Yeah. At that time, Serendipity again, company announces VRS or a VS voluntary separation program for directors and above. So I just grabbed and the parachute. You were a director by then? Ah, I was a director. So I just, I thought it's a godsend. I, I couldn't have asked for more. I grab it without knowing where I'm going to fall. I just thought, okay, parachute has been given. Inside the aeroplane is suffocating. So let me just... A parachute has been given, so let me I take love the parachute. That. I love that analogy, right? I've got this parachute inside. I'm suffocating. Like you said, it's not aligned with my inner nature. I have this, you know, seed of an idea. Let me take it. Yeah. And even at that stage, uh, honestly, I didn't know what I'll be doing, but I will not be doing this. Something I was clear about just a fresh air. Different. Wow. Yeah. No, at a, at a broad level, I, was, I had uh, three things in mind, uh, but was not very clear. I wanted to do something for children. Okay. Uh, children's, again, education related, and life skills related in some form. Uh, I want to do something for professionals or uh, young adults or profe uh, corporate professionals uh, in terms of the learnings I've had in my corporate uh, uh, thing. 
and the third aspect was gamification or what do you call that games and gamification okay these were the three broad ideas but i had no clue of how to implement them where to get started i also thought i should teach because teaching was something that was giving me joy teaching training whatever was giving me joy that is all i had in mind and i had to uh, if i can should i talk through further or you have another uh, no 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 and so on. contrary to what i would believe and others would believe that somebody has given you a vsp and <clears throat> now i have all the time i can do whatever i want right ideally it will be a wonderful world right that is when i landed into a more miserable world contrary to my own uh, expectation the reason is it was 20 years or probably years of programming of your schedule so the lack of structure lack of structure uh put me at huge uh, i had I, i could do anything but when you could do anything you don't do you, you struggle with what to do absolutely okay. that hit and, me and i'm so glad you spelled that out because yeah it's very true it can happen in fact uh, i think this should be something that everyone should keep in mind when they leave when they decide to make a switch from be it a 9 to 5 or some form of organized employment contract into completely being on your own right because then this yeah, yeah. it was a shocker for me lack of schedules it's not that the friends went away or anything of that sort but you still feel alone inside i mean like you are like a uh, Your your mind starts sinking now. Now you're alone. Now you yeah. don't belong to that company. There are or... no benchmarks. There are no references. Yes, yes. So it was a huge struggle. I did start dabbling different things. I went and uh, I thought I should uh, teach something. I should. I went to Times uh, Time uh, Education. I I applied for a job in Fit G. I thought I'll do some uh, teaching for uh, whatever eighth or ninth standard uh, students. Okay, I didn't want to. I was not comfortable with. higher than that because it's been years since i was in touch with the uh, subjects uh i dabbled multiple similar things uh it was a period of unrest i would say then some structure came in uh, as a golden opportunity my wife's teacher was a professor in um, zain chennai zavier institute of management chennai and she connected me with her i started uh, uh, getting an opportunity to do a visiting faculty role in ob hr uh, for them for one term that was the first sense when i got a structure okay i had to take a course i had to go to a college or a place to work at least for part of the day and uh, be back so oh, that put us some structure in my day yeah. it's not a 9 to 5 it is 2 3 hours but it put a structure in my day and it gave me some kind of contacts in the college and uh, it got me an opportunity to be with students with to be with people and all that so that put in a structure and then of course i was um, working with another set of friends and slowly things started evolving and then uh, got in touch with a um, think, friend who was in the word evolving right which mm, describes mm. your journey so beautifully yeah, yeah. till the time you put in your papers and decided to be on your own and mm. even beyond that so there mm. is an, there is the inspiration the things that you identified you want to do something with children something around teaching something for professional something you know you like gamification there are all these ideas and then you need vehicles or context so people and these started coming your way and it has been a process of evolution and i'm sure it will continue to be it is a, it is continuing yeah, to evolve it is. it is continuing to evolve as of today you teach you run your own company around gamification you teach courses on learning you do workshops yeah so uh um, so if you look back from this vantage point of where you've come and where this entire evolution your journey has brought you uh and if i were to ask you to put on the hat of an advisor right in hindsight because we we learn things and we recognize things and we wonder i wish i had known this then so right. if you were to give advice to somebody who's feeling like you were feeling you know when you described it as suffocating or the ego is being fulfilled but i'm feeling empty inside right i was just in that place right now sitting in a very well paying good job perhaps at, even at the position of a director but feeling this way inside 
and is considering being out there and trying something on their own, what would be your three points of advice to such a person? Sure, yeah. I would say, uh, one, I, I'll share both the good things that I happened to do based on advice from friends and also things I wish I had done before. Yes, of course. Uh, so one thing is uh, the most common concern that all of us have is the financial security, right? At least we don't know what we are venturing into and nothing is going to be uh, uh, giving something of sustenance immediately, right? We have to be prepared at least for three years of uh, running your family and other commitments. Have that buffer. Yeah. yeah, have the buffer of minimum three years. Hoping that, okay, within three years, you'll figure out something or the other. That's the idea. But at least three years uh, would help. That was an advice from my mentor. And uh, go to a professional certified financial planner. This was another advice from my senior person. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we think we know things. A lot of times we uh, try to cut on... Uh, uh, th there is the sense that I can work out my budgets. I know how I spend. I know what my, but no, please seek the help <laughs> of a professional certified planner because they have seen a lot more of the world around us. They just and, know data uh, points. Yeah. And they will help in asking questions that we might not have factored in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these two are very uh, things from the financial side. Another is, even if your life is good and rosy, it's just a matter of time. Let's say you are a happy, enjoying, satisfied mid-manager. Okay. We are experiencing turbulence like nothing uh, else, I mean, uh, like anything, right? Uh, world over. You don't know what jobs are going to be there, not there. It's, it's really, really evolving across industries. We've never had this in ages. I second so that. <laughs> not, nothing, is, nothing is going to be stable. Even if you are, whether you are suffocating, whether you are enjoying, it's better to have uh, start doing dabbling something. It, it, it need not be for money. Uh, start having hobbies, interests. Dabbling something on the side, something on that the you're side. really interested yeah, in, right? That, uh, you can yeah. connect to outside of your job. Were that job to suddenly go away or you decide to leave it? Yeah, yeah. correct, correct. And uh, try out something there. I mean, like, uh, I won't say a business per se, but let's say, it can even be, let's say you are good at, uh, one is good at uh, art, schooling, or uh, music, or anything of that sort, right? Start teaching, doing mini workshops. It's not for the money, but it's for the exploration. That's beautiful. Okay. So one of the ways we learn best is through teaching, right? Right, right. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, anytime I want to learn something, I announce a course on it and I start Yes, teaching. yes. And, Some... and that's, seriously, that's actually research has shown that's the best way to learn. So yes, yeah, yes. wonderful ideas. Start dabbling. Start dabbling even when life is good. And yeah, and yeah, create opportunities to teach. Create opportunities. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, other thing I would say, the third learning, which I also shared, I want to re-emphasize. Uh, if you had, even if you had all the money, all the comforts, all the needs taken care, there is something, and even if you had planned out everything, uh, all your finances, etc., there's a big disconnect between the, the so-called intellectual mind and, uh, I don't know, uh, the technical term, the emotional mind or the, the programmed mind, whatever you call it, right? It, it rebels because you, it has been used to a certain structure. All the, uh, what do you call that? Uh, conditioning. Conditioning, right? Hmm. It is like, programmed and when you are yeah. without the uh, uh, without any formal job to do or rather the day it will start wow doubling so structure to the day uh, is extremely important it may not be 100% structured at least 50% of the day should be structured I think this advice, I think, is worth its weight in gold, silver, nuggets. I speak as someone on my own and also as you know, the lives of so many people I've seen, not all of whom have actually managed to pick it up the way you did either, right? I've actually seen people drown in the whole, just, you know, because now you're in an unstructured space, very talented, very gifted people just 
not being able to handle it. So yeah, creating that semblance of a structure or as much as you need, maybe a cohort, maybe a group, an accountability buddy, whatever works for you. Yes, right? yes, yeah. yes. And the last uh, thing I would say is, uh, uh, just wanted to say, yeah. So this, uh, and, and, I, and honestly, it's not that I have, uh, whatever I'm going to say, it may look as if I have mastered this thing far away from it. I go through cycles even now, okay? The biggest learning I continue to have, the way to make money, the way to make uh, business grow, or the way to network, is not for that sake. Uh, like, I've done a lot of proposals, actively wanting to win deals and all that, right? It doesn't work. But the moments of the periods of time where I truly wanted to help others. I mean, there are moments where you, uh, your mind, uh, the spirit wants to be of service to others, right? Mm -hmm. Without expecting anything in re return. And those have re resulted in opportunities for me. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful, Kartik. And you know, I'll, I... I'll, I'll give you a classic example right in this conversation with you, Ramya. Mm -hmm. Two weeks back, we had not, uh, I, neither you nor me had any idea of this conversation. Yeah. It just happened. Uh, and uh, the way it happened was we connected on some cause, which was nothing, nothing monetary in nature. Like I had, I had requested you to do a course and that was for being done for the students. No monetary expectations not whatsoever. And then you shared some nice articles on WhatsApp with me. And I commented on some article or post of yours, okay? Uh, saying that you are doing something nice. And somehow you felt like asking me and I felt like, uh, let's have this conversation. Now, let us play it differently. Supposing. If my mind wanted, hey, Ramya is doing this series, how do I get into that? If I had approached you saying that, hey, Ramya, can I also be part of your series? Possibly you might have still agreed. Okay. But there is a possibility saying that, why? Right? Meaning like, I'm, I'm just trying, it, it, it wouldn't have. It's, it's a beautiful example, Karthik. And, you know, I... Uh, I get this in theory and it's so wonderful that you can actually tie it into real example because that is actually what I'm learning through all my experiments as well. That the growth, the business, the profits, the, the money, what did I not mention? The fame, the success, right? All these are, they're almost like the byproducts and they happen if they happen. And sometimes they don't happen. And if they don't happen also, they don't happen. But to keep our focus on the core, the why. Yeah what we're doing and in this yeah. case if you you know bring in the service mentality the contribution the helping it just makes it that much more powerful if i mean there could be grander reasons to this but the most simple reason that i can think of is a piece of research i came across that shows as human beings how we are all wired altruistically in the sense we can't help it yeah, Which means yeah, yeah. if we help someone, and you know this from positive psychology, right? Random acts of kindness. You do something kind, you help something. You can't not help feel good. Correct, so correct, exactly. you're in the service mode, you're just, yeah, you've got that much more going for you. Exactly, precisely, precisely. Thank you so much. So much for, yeah, you know, ending with this very, very powerful reminder. So it's been a joy and delight to have you on board to... You know, uh, thank you for taking us through your journey, taking us through your evolution, the evolution of your interests and the evolution of you as a vehicle that could carry those interests forward. And, um, and I'm sure the evolution is going to go forward also. Wishing you all the very best for that and thanking you for the very precious parts of your life you shared, which are great experiences, right? So I'm I would be so delighted if, you know, somebody who listens to this doesn't have to reinvent the wheel and doesn't have to go through that period of suddenly having, facing a lack of structure and, you know, being spaced out. And I wish that this, this conversation can contribute in that way to so many people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you once again. I think this is a much needed series and we, we do need uh, uh, to 
tap into the experiences of people of different kinds right and really uh, and and you're doing a fantastic job experiences. yeah vulnerable experiences that is what is needed more and more vulnerable experiences are needed uh, unfortunately we just read the success stories and uh, the, 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 the media covers that yeah yeah so yeah. it's fantastic that you're doing that and thank you uh, it was a wonderful conversation with you thank you thank you for coming in thank, thank you, you. If you are someone who's looking to craft your life and work in a way that is more in line with your inner rhythm, then do visit my website, www.craftingmylife.com. You'll find it in the description because I have a host of resources put together for you. And this is based on 20 years of my own research and work and work with people as a coach in this area. I also have a free newsletter. So your starting points should be to sign up for my newsletter, subscribe to this channel to stay updated for further videos and to go on to the edX site and look for my free MOOC course there titled Crafting Realities, Work, Happiness and Meaning and, and then reach out to me if you need further assistance. I also offer private coaching as well as I run group coaching sessions and I also conduct residential retreats and you can find all, those info, all that information on my website or in the newsletter as and when we announce it.